240 Hz is slowly becoming the new 144 Hz. Like LG just launched this monitor, the 27G R83Q, at a price of about $500 US. And that's the same MSRP that the good old 27G L850 launched at a few years ago, which was a 144 Hz monitor with otherwise pretty similar specs. Now the first thing you'll notice is that this monitor looks rather similar to LG's OLED monitor, which seems to be LG's new design language for all monitors now. But you can tell that this is a more affordable monitor, as LG got rid of a few things that drive up the cost. The stand is now fully plastic, and LG also got rid of the RGB LEDs on the back of the monitor. Curiously though, this monitor still has a glossy bar under the display, which was for housing the infrared sensor for the remote control of the OLED monitor. But the 27G R83Q doesn't come with a remote control, and there also isn't a sensor in this bar, so on this monitor the bar appears to be for design purposes only. Now, the stand allows for basically any adjustment except swivel. You can rotate the screen into portrait orientation, and the height adjustment range is very large. So no complaints there, but I'm still not a huge fan of the V-shaped stand-based design. It's about 10 cm smaller side to side than the aluminum base of the LG OLED, which is good to see, but it still takes up more space on the desk than a good old flat-based design. Now, there aren't really any surprises in the spec sheet, but I have to say that I'm a bit surprised by the panel LG decided to use. See, LG's display division make their own 240Hz 1440p IPS panels, which are used in several monitors by other manufacturers like Alienware, and you would expect LG would use one of their own panels for this monitor as well. Though when comparing the subpixel structure, we can clearly see that LG is using a different panel with straight subpixels instead of the chevron-shaped pixels of the LG display panel. And the factory menu confirms the suspicion. LG decided to go with a panel made by BOE. No idea why LG did this, but we see how it compares to the LG display panel that's being used in the Alienware AW2723DF throughout this video. Now when it comes to the contrast ratio, this panel easily is as good as LG Display's competing panel, even measuring a slightly higher contrast ratio of almost 1100 to 1. The backlight they're using is also very capable, reaching almost 500 nits. Though the minimum brightness is a bit higher than I would like to see, but 75 nits is still decent for using this monitor at night. Now before we continue, I want to thank Bezos for sponsoring this portion of the video. This Bezos fast charger is only just about twice as thick as a smartphone, so it doesn't take up a lot of space in your bag or even fits in your pocket. It also fits neatly behind your furniture if you're tight on space. Despite the slim footprint, it can put out up to 65 watts of power for 20 minutes and 45 watts sustained thanks to the 5th generation GAN technology. You can either charge a single device with full power via the USB-C port and the included USB-C cable, charge with up to 60 watts over the USB-A port, or charge two devices at once and have the charger split its power between both ports, with the majority of the power going to the USB-C port. It also supports multiple charging protocols, including Power Delivery 3.0, Qualcomm's Quick Charge 3.0, and many more to fast charge devices from Apple, Samsung, Xiaomi and other brands. Us European folks also get two adapters in the box that slide onto the photodon prongs and click securely into place. You don't need one of those janky travel adapters with this charger. So this charger is really made for people that travel a lot and want a compact but powerful charger for on the go. If this sounds good to you, check out the link in the video description down below. Back to the video. Now as virtually every other monitor these days, the 27G R83Q does also have the infamous VESA HDR400 certification. And yes, it does accept HDR signals and actually gets decently bright, but there's no local dimming and the native contrast ratio just isn't high enough for a good HDR experience. The accuracy of the HDR mode also leaves a bit to be desired, but that's really not what's holding this monitor back from producing a good HDR image. Now the color accuracy in the SDR modes actually was a pleasant surprise for me and the image already looks pretty good out of the box. Sure, the very first thing you notice when turning on this monitor are the oversaturated colors because this is a wide gamut display with almost 1.4 times the color gamut volume of sRGB, so oversaturation is very much expected. But besides that, the default setup is actually pretty decent. It's mainly the white point that needs some correction, but it's really not crazy far off. 
Of course, the high delta E can be attributed to the oversaturation, but a G also implemented an sRGB mode that's supposed to get rid of this issue. And it actually does. This clearly is one of the better sRGB modes I've seen. Only the white point has a tint, but thankfully, LG did not block the RGB controls in this mode. This really isn't something I should be that excited about. But yeah, for some reason, most monitors block the RGB controls in the sRGB mode. So it's actually great to see that LG decided to leave the white point adjustable. And with a few minor corrections, the color accuracy we can achieve is actually really good. Like with these numbers, you could easily use this monitor for color sensitive tasks like photo editing. Of course, the sRGB mode is limited to, well, sRGB, so for the full color gamut volume, we have to use one of the other modes. And with minor adjustments, we can also get great results. And after a full calibration and profiling, we of course get almost perfect accuracy, as we would expect. Now, in case you don't have a colorimeter, these are the settings I'd recommend using. You can also download the ICC profile I've created for this monitor, link in the video description. It's meant to be used with these settings, but only with one of the gamer modes. Please don't use it with the sRGB mode. Now, in case you have a colorimeter, you can also use LG's calibration studio software to perform a hardware calibration that's gonna be stored directly on the monitor and will be applied system-wide. That's a pretty nice feature for a gaming monitor, I have to say. The process took a bit longer than my typical calibration with display cal, and the software doesn't even use a lot of patches with the default settings. But the setup itself is pretty straightforward, and this probably is one of the easiest calibration programs to use. The results are good. Like, display cal did a better job technically, but you could easily use this for professional color work, so I'm happy with the results. But let's not forget that this is a 240 Hz gaming monitor, so let's actually talk about the response times and all the other stuff that matters for gaming. Now we have the choice between four different overdrive modes and I have to say they're all kind of usable, which is refreshing to see. Even the highest overdrive mode doesn't show crazy overshoot, I still wouldn't recommend using it, but I guess you actually could. Now the best mode is either normal or fast. As you can see in the UFO photos, there's almost no perceivable difference between them, but the response time measurements show us that fast actually is slightly faster. So let's go with the fast mode. It's also pretty much optimal down to 120 Hz. I'd consider that a single overdrive mode experience for a 240 Hz monitor. Though if you're using refresh rates below 120 Hz a lot, you should use the normal mode instead, as it performs better with lower refresh rates and really isn't that much slower with higher refresh rates. Now let's pull up some other monitors for comparison. The Alienware AW2723DF has a small advantage as it's clocked at 280 Hz, which slightly increases the motion sharpness. It also has ever so slightly faster response times than the LG when G-Sync is turned off. But when we run both monitors with Adaptive Sync on, they really perform extremely similar. By the way, the response times behavior of the 27GR83Q doesn't change no matter if Adaptive Sync is turned on or off. So yeah, a slight advantage for the Alienware when Adaptive Sync is turned off, but overall the gaming experience is extremely similar between these two. Just like with the Gigabyte M27QX, which is kind of hard to get these days, but again, very similar response times. The 240Hz OLED is the odd one out in this comparison. Not a night and day difference, but the UFOs clearly are less blurry than on the IPS monitors. By the way, this is all the motion sharpness you'll be getting out of the 27GR83Q, as LG didn't bother implementing backlight strobing. Now, as we'd expect from a good 240Hz monitor, the display lag is very low. It doesn't change no matter if Adaptive Sync is turned on or off, which is also good to see. Adaptive Sync in general works as flawless as you would expect from a monitor that was certified as G-Sync compatible by Nvidia. I couldn't detect flickering or any other defects in my testing. LFC also works as intended and kicks in at about 58 FPS. Now I have to say that I really enjoy using the 27GR83Q. Sure, in terms of response times, it's not as fast as its OLED brother and it also doesn't have the super deep black level of the OLED panel, but this is a much more affordable monitor. And the gaming experience really isn't that different after all, at least not when it comes to competitive gaming. So even though I've been using the 240Hz OLED a lot lately, I still very much enjoy a good 240Hz IPS monitor. And this is a good monitor. It's very comparable to the Gigabyte M27QX 
and the Alienware AW2723DF. Though the Gigabyte doesn't seem to be available anymore, which is a shame, and the Alienware's model typically is a good bit more expensive. I have all of them linked down below in case you want to check the current pricing in your region. So with the M27QX kind of being out of the equation and the AW2723DF being more expensive, the $500 launch price of this monitor seems pretty attractive. And the 27GR83Q even brings a few things to the table that the others don't have. It supports hardware calibration and it has an sRGB mode that's actually pretty good and user adjustable. Now, in case you're unsure if you rather should spend a bit more and get the 240Hz OLED instead, I recommend watching my full review that I'm gonna link on screen right now. Thanks for watching, man sieht sich im nächsten Video.